The number three thing that I hate about this bike is the ground clearance. The number two thing I hate about this bike is the suspension. Hey, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, do that thing down below. I just turned 20,000 miles on my KTM 390 Adventure, and I thought now would be a good time to talk about the five things that I hate about this bike. Now, I think over the 20,000 plus miles that I've ridden on it, I've got to know it pretty well. So of those things, there's very few, but there are a few things that I hate about this bike. So let's get into that. All right, number five is the traction control. The fact that it, if you stall the bike, it will reset itself to being on and you have to go through all of the menu to get it turned off again. Now, I don't stall the bike a lot, but when I do, it's usually when I'm in a very uh, difficult position and I've got to try to get out of that. So that is uh, my number five uh, thing that I hate about this bike is the traction control resets itself. Number four thing I hate about this bike is it came with cast wheels and I had to spend another thousand dollars to get the spoked wheels. And not only that, but for all of you out there, if you don't have the spoked wheels, I think I got the second to last set in the country before the um, they were sold out and they had been discontinued at that point. So that is a big issue that I hate is that they come with cast wheels and now for those of you that can't get the spoked wheels, you're stuck with those. So that's number four, cast and now you can't get spoked wheels. The number three thing that I hate about this bike is the ground clearance. I put the Black Dog Cycle Works skid plate on it because I wanted to protect the engine and I lost some ground clearance from that. It was eight inches, now it's about seven and a half. I hate the fact that this doesn't have more ground clearance. The seat height is 33 inches, but the ground clearance is between seven and a half to eight inches. I don't understand why something that's that tall this couldn't be elevated just a little bit more. Now I know they meant to make this kind of a, a road bike, you know, cause it's built on the Duke platform, but man, just a little bit more ground clearance would really be helpful. So that's the number three thing I hate about this bike. The number two thing I hate about this bike is the suspension. I think KTM could have give it, given it a little bit more travel and put better springs in there. It was way under sprung. I had to replace the fork springs in order to get it to sag properly. And after blowing out two rear shocks, I ended up putting a custom rear shock on because the, the stock ones just were not holding up to the off-road riding. Now I understand I'm pushing it beyond what it was initially intended for and where a lot of people are taking it. However, I think KTM could have done a little bit better job with their suspension given that WP is owned by KTM and they do have some bikes that come factory with really great suspension. I would have been willing to pay extra for a better suspension to start with, especially because this is a WP 43 millimeter fork. They could have taken the same fork off of the KTM 790 slash 890 changed out the lugs on the fork, used the same fork with that eight inches of travel, and this would have been a much better bike, which is what they're doing on the Adventure R that they're working on. So the number two thing I hate about this bike is the suspension and having to do custom on it, custom springs, custom shock to get it to work properly. The number one thing I hate about the KTM 390 Adventure is the stock ergonomics. The handlebar, the location of it being low with the bend coming back, really, really irritating. It took bar risers to get it up to be more comfortable. And then once I put on more a straight bar, the KTM Suzuki bend on this bike, it made a world of difference. And I was thinking, why didn't I not do this early on? Also the foot pegs, the foot pegs stock are canted forward because it's more of a road platform. They're terrible. KTM really should invest a little bit of money and get the foot pegs fixed or use a little bit different bracket. It's not that hard to do, but that was a big irritation. Now it required going aftermarket. So just getting the ergonomics fixed, in my opinion, fixed on this bike, you're going to be spending anywhere from six to $800. So that is a huge irritation. Now I understand 
that a lot of bikes require almost every bike that you buy new off factory floor is going to require some things here and there but the volume the the extra things with the handlebars the bar risers and especially the foot pegs that that really really was frustrating i knew i had to do it but it was frustrating so the number one thing i hated about the ktm or hate about through ktm 390 adventure is its stock ergonomics you're gonna have to spend some money to get it set up to fit you and to feel better I have one more bonus complaint about the KTM 390 Adventure and it's not really about the bike. It's just my experience I've had with the bike. I've ridden the BMW R1200 GS, which is a very polarizing bike. People have very differing opinions on, on the utility of that bike. I have found this bike to be equally as polarizing and I did not anticipate that. I've heard people be like, yeah, great, go do what you wanna do, you know, enjoy the bike. But that has not been the case. I have had a number of people tell me I'm riding the wrong bike, tell me I shouldn't have to modify a bike to fit my riding needs, and tell me because of the way that I ride, I should be riding a bigger bike. And this hasn't been one or two times. I think I've been approached at least a dozen times or more about this bike. And then if you watch reviews on YouTube, people either love this bike or they're extra critical of this bike. Fort 9 is a great example of this. If you look at his thoughts on the BMW G310GS, he loved that bike, but he rode this and he hated this bike. And those bikes are very, very similar and I think this is more capable. Now, I know there's two camps. I tend to be on the pro KTM 390 Adventure, obviously, and also um, a bit defensive about it, partly because of all the things that I've done on this bike. It is capable of doing it, a few modifications, but to be told that I'm on the wrong bike and that this bike isn't meant for that type of riding has been uh, something that I really hate about my experience with the KTM 390 Adventure. So anyway, I hope you found this entertaining. It'll give you something to think about if you're thinking about this bike. If you ride one of these and you have some things that you hate about your bike, leave that in the comments below. And of course, I will be doing another video on the five things that I love about this bike. But right now, I just wanted to focus on just uh, the things that irritate us about this bike and the things that if they were just a little bit better would really expand the ability of this bike and maybe save us some money in our wallet. So thanks for watching. Get out, do some riding, ride safe, and I will see you out there.